Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to five player game Coup, designed by Ricky Tata and Lamam Games and published by Indie Boards and Cards. It's the not too distant future, and you are a powerful government official working to manipulate, bribe, and bluff your way into power by destroying the influence of your rivals. But beware, because your opponents are trying to do the same thing. <laughs> so join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, shuffle these cards made up of three copies of each type of character into a face-down court deck and then deal two to each player. In this video, I'll set up for a three-player game. You can always look at your own cards, but keep them secret and always return them face down in front of you afterwards. These are the coins that you'll place in an area known as the treasury. From this, give two to each player. Finally, give each player one of these double-sided reference cards. The information is the same on both sides, just in different formats. So use the side that you like best. It's a good idea to get familiar with the information on these as they'll tell you the actions that you can take, but I'm also going to go over them with you in this video. The player who won the last game is now the first player, or you can pick randomly if this is your first game. And that's the setup. In Coup, you're trying to remove the influence of the other players, and your influence is represented by the cards that you have face down in front of you. So at the beginning of the game, each player has two influence. However, if you're forced to reveal and leave face up one of these cards, then you've lost an influence. And if both of them are then face up, you're eliminated from the game. So the goal is to be the last player surviving. The game is played in turns, starting with the first player and then going clockwise around the table. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you what you do on your turn. On your turn, you must take an action. You can never pass. And the actions that you can take are listed here. The first two are very simple, so let's go over those. On your turn, you can take income as an action. This simply allows you to take one coin from the treasury and add it to your personal collection. So that means you would just do this. Or instead, you can take the foreign aid action and collect two coins, which might leave some of you asking, well, why would you ever take the income action if foreign aid gives you two coins instead of just one? Well, that's a very good question. When you choose the income action, no one can stop you from taking that one coin. But when you announce that you'd like to take the foreign aid action, you must first wait to see if anyone attempts to block you. In Coup, the different character cards in the game have different abilities. For example, if we look at the Duke card, it says on its second line that it blocks foreign aid. So just to be clear, if you want to take the income action, you just grab one coin, no one can stop you. But if you want to take foreign aid in order to get two coins with one action, after declaring your intention, you first have to wait and see if anyone at the table speaks up and says, hey, I have the Duke and I'm going to block you. But here's the catch. The person claiming to have the Duke doesn't actually have to have the Duke in order to say that they have the Duke. Confused? <laughs> Don't worry. Let's go to the table and I'll explain. Let's say it's my turn and I choose to take the foreign aid action. Before I take my new coins, anyone at the table, let's say this person, can speak up and say, I have the Duke and I block you. Now, if two people wanted to block me, only the person who speaks up first will end up doing it. Once a player has announced a character's ability that they wish to use, they are claiming to have that character face down in front of them but they don't actually have to have that character. They could be lying. This creates a new opportunity to be challenged. Once you claim to have a character in order to use its ability, you also have to wait a moment to see if any other player at the table chooses to challenge your claim. If no one does, then it doesn't matter if this player didn't have the Duke at all. No one else was bold enough to challenge it, so they get to use that ability as if they actually did have the Duke, which would block my foreign aid. However, if I, or maybe the player over here, decides to speak up and say, I don't think you have the Duke card. I think you're bluffing. This is called a challenge. Once a player has been challenged, they must prove that they actually do have the character that they claimed by revealing it. If they don't reveal that character, or if they choose not to reveal it, then they lose the challenge. In this example, if the player did reveal that they had the Duke, then they win the challenge. The player who lost the challenge may then pick any of their face-down cards to turn face-up. 
Remember, once you lose influence and are forced to flip a card face up in front of you, you can no longer use that card anymore. You can think of it like a dead card. So now, not only can this player not use this particular captain, they also only have one influence left which is represented by their remaining face down card. If the player who is trying to perform a character ability wins the challenge, not only do they get to perform the ability, in this case blocking my foreign aid, they then also shuffle the character that they used back into this court deck and then draw a new one placing it face down in front of them. In this way, they haven't lost any influence and nobody knows what new card they might have. Keeping in mind there are three copies of each character, so it is possible that this player now has the Duke again. If instead, after being challenged, this player here could not reveal the Duke, their bluff was successfully called, and since they lost the challenge, they would have to pick one of their cards to flip over and reveal, thereby losing one of their influence. So going back to our original question, yes, foreign aid may give a player two coins, but it can be blocked by the duke, whereas there's no character ability that can block the income action. So sometimes just collecting one coin is the safer thing to do. We'll look at this coup action a little bit later, but first, let's learn about the different character actions. For example, on my turn, I could claim to have the duke and perform his tax action, which lets me take three coins from the treasury. Once again, I don't actually need to show that I have the Duke amongst my face down cards. I'm simply claiming that I have the Duke and assuming that I'm not challenged, I'll get to take the three coins. Now, if one of the other players speaks up and says, Rodney, I don't think you have the Duke. I'm calling your bluff. Then I've been challenged and all challenges work the same way as we just saw. In other words, if I reveal that I have the Duke, then the player that challenged me will lose an influence and must pick one of their cards to reveal and then I'll shuffle the card I revealed in order to prove my claim back into the court deck and then draw a new one face down. On the other hand, if I couldn't or chose not to prove my claim, then I must reveal one of my cards and then I'll lose an influence. Now you might be thinking, Rodney, you said that if you have the Duke, you don't have to reveal it to prove your claim if you don't want to. Well, why wouldn't you want to prove your claim? It is risky, but it is a form of building towards a double bluff later. In other words, if I actually had the Duke here, but I reveal this because I say, oh, I didn't have the Duke, you got me. Then later in the game, I might claim to have the Duke, which might really cause someone to call me out, thinking there's no way he had the Duke and didn't reveal it earlier. And then when they challenged me, I could reveal the Duke at that time, causing that other player to lose influence, which could potentially help me win the game. On your turn, if you claim to have the captain, you can use his steal action to take two coins from another player. The captain also has a secondary ability that blocks stealing. Let's say on my turn, I choose to take the steal action targeting this player. In other words, I'm claiming to have the captain. Now I have to give a moment for any player to challenge me. Maybe this one speaks up and says, Rodney, I don't think you have the captain. In which case we would resolve the challenge as normal. Let's say that I reveal this and show that I do have the captain. This means the player here lost the challenge and they'll have to reveal one of their characters losing one influence. Now before I resolve my ability to steal, I once again have to give another moment because the person that I am stealing from and only that person may also claim to have the captain in order to use the captain's ability to block stealing. So let's say the player here does make that claim. They will not reveal any cards at this time. They're just claiming to have the captain and if they go unchallenged, then their cards will remain face down and my steal will be blocked. That said, I don't want my steal blocked and I'm suspicious that they're lying. So once again, at any time that someone claims to have a role, any player can speak up to challenge them. And I will by saying, I don't think you have the captain. Well, in this case, it turns out the player did have a captain. So I lost the challenge and that means I'll have to reveal one of my cards and I'll lose an influence. This also means that the player here did successfully block my attempt to steal. Additionally, because both of these cards were revealed to correctly prove that we had the things we said we did, we would then shuffle them into the deck and then we would each get to draw a new one, placing it face down in front of us to restore that influence. A player can claim to have the assassin and then take the assassinate action on their turn. To do this, they'll need to return three coins from their personal supply back to the treasury, and then they pick someone who must lose one influence. If the assassin is challenged successfully, their entire action is blocked. In other words, if I was trying to initiate the assassinate action against this player, 
I would first have to spend three coins. But then players would still have the option of challenging me. This player might say, Rodney, I don't think you're the assassin. And if I couldn't prove that I was, then as usual, I would reveal one card, losing one influence. But I would then get the three coins back since I wasn't actually the assassin, so I really couldn't have taken that action. But now, let's talk about one of the other characters, the Contessa. This provides you with no main action, but you can claim to have the Contessa in order to block an assassination attempt against you. Let's go back to the previous example, and we'll say that I'm spending three coins to choose the assassinate action, and I'll target this player. Now, let's pretend no one challenges me. They don't realize I'm lying and I don't have the assassin, but they think that I might. Before my assassinate action resolves, the player being attacked, and only that player, may speak up and say, hey, I have the Contessa, and I'm going to block your assassination attempt. Once again, they don't reveal any cards, but because they are claiming to have a character, anyone can challenge it. But perhaps I get cold feet and decide I won't, and neither does anyone else. Since the claim went unchallenged, the player here gets to continue to pretend like they did have the Contessa, whether they do or don't. So my assassinate attempt is blocked. We saw that when trying to take the assassinate action, you have to spend your three coins. But if you're successfully challenged, and it's proven you did not have the assassin, then the coins that you spent are returned to you. However, instead, if your assassination attempt is blocked by the Contessa, the coins spent on the attack are not returned to you because the assassinate action was actually attempted, so it had to be paid for. It just wasn't successful. You can think of it as your assassin missing its mark. Finally, we have the ambassador, who has an exchange action. This allows them to take two random cards from the court deck. They can then exchange as many of these as they want, including none of them, with any other cards they have face down in front of them. Once they're finished, they'll still have two cards in hand that they'll then return to the deck to be shuffled in. You'll also see that a player can claim to have the ambassador, like the captain, in order to block a steal action that is being attempted against them by another player claiming to have the captain. The final action to mention is a coup. Like income and foreign aid, it does not require you to claim to have any particular character. You simply pay seven coins from your personal supply back to the treasury and then pick any player to lose one influence, meaning again that they'll flip one of their cards face up. This action cannot be challenged and it cannot be blocked. In fact, if you ever start your turn with 10 or more coins, you must spend that turn performing a coup action. And those are all of the actions. But before we wrap up, I want to warn you about the dangers of calling out an assassination attempt. For example, if I was choosing to assassinate this player, and that player challenged me saying, hey, I don't think you have the assassin, and then I reveal that in fact I do have the assassin, they'll lose an influence for having challenged me when I was telling the truth, but then my assassination attempt will go through, which will cause them to lose another influence and eliminate them from the game. So you definitely want to be careful about calling out an assassination. And that's everything you need to know to play coup. Now, if you have only two players, there are a couple of adjustments to the rules, and I'll put those in the description of this video if you'd like to check those out. But otherwise, if you have any questions about anything that you saw here, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.